So we will make sure to post it on the website later in case uh, you couldn't stay the entire time or you had someone else who was interested and wasn't able to join. Um, but let me introduce the first two speakers. We have Tosta Tanoa. He's a chemical oceanographer at Gail Mahalmov's Center for Ocean Research in Kiel, Germany. Um, and we have Vili uh, Koafalo, who is a professor of ocean science at the University of Miami and a co-chair of the Coast Predict program, which we'll hear more about today. So let me share the slides and then we can get going. Okay, thank you very much, Anne, for that introduction. So I'm Tosta Tanra, chemical oceanographer, and I'm co-chairing the Global Ocean Observing System, GOOSE, together with my colleague, Anja White, from the Ocean Frontiers Institute in, in Canada, in Halifax. And she will give this seminar or this presentation on the next session, uh, my night time. So today we're gonna to talk about the co-designing of integrated ocean observing and pre prediction or forecasting capability. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of presentation on, on the goose and the food, the framework of ocean observing framework <laughs> around that. Next slide, please. So we do have a, it looks pretty impressive this map. If you look at uh, this map from Ocean Ops, which is an operational tracking facility of Goose. Many observing platforms, actually close to 9,000 in this particular draft here from 86 countries, in addition to that 170 satellites, all based on 12 global ocean observing networks. Uh, so we do have some instruments in the water, but we still feel full, full short of what we really need to fill the gaps of observing all the essential ocean variables adequately. So we really need to step up uh, our ambitions to create a fully integrated global observing and forecasting system. That really requires partnerships, collaboration, communication, and most of all, I think the co-design cool and the stakeholder engagement of that. Next slide, please. So Goose identified three application areas uh, that we primarily work on. It's about delivering information on, on climate, mitigation, adaptation, seasonal forecasts. Uh, it's also operational services, which is more short term, you know, days, hours, weeks of information supporting marine economy, you know, ocean operations and reducing risks. And this is the ocean health aspects. It's about ecosystem. It's about you know, harvesting, you know, the richness of the ocean. And for all of these areas, these three areas, we need a reliable chain of ocean information, feeding into data system and giving products. More and more, we see the need for information on extreme weather and ocean events, natural disasters. We need to assess the efficiency of climate adaptation and mitigation efforts. And we need to understand the climate change. So these are the main areas of goose. Next step, next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is a graph from the recently, or not, not that recently anymore, published goose 2030 strategy. And it really lays out the, the value chain and applications in the end for ocean information about weather forecasting, ocean forecast, early warnings, harmful algae bloom, and so on. And it's really important to build a key infrastructure uh, for that delivery, from the observations to data management, the analysis models leading down to applications. And that is really what, what Goose tries to do in a co-design cool manner. If you go to the next slide, please, we're going to see the um, main strategic objectives that are illustrated in the Goose 
2030 strategy. And it also shows the vision and the mission of Goose. And you see the picture here of the strategy itself. And I urge you, if you don't have, haven't done that so far, nice to go to the Goose homepage and download this little strategy brochure. So the vision is really a truly global ocean observing system that delivers essential information needed for sustainable development, safety, well-being, and prosperity, really much in line of the ocean decade. And the mission is to lead the ocean observing community and create a partnership to grow an integrated, responsive, and sustained ocean observing system. And the strategy is really looking at this key strategic objective that you can read yourself, <clears throat> but they are really grouped in three different main regions. It's about the green bullet here, the green circles, system integration and delivery. So that is the kind of core business of rules, authoritative guidance on design, strengthening the observation implementation and the open and fair data delivery. But we also talk about deepening engagement and impact. These are the blue circles. And it's really about empowering end user applications, uh, creating a system that we can evaluate the impact of the observing and forecasting system. We have to you do have advocacy and communication uh, to policymakers, but also to the general public about the value uh, of having an observer observing system. It's about strengthening partnerships. And the, the yellow or, or orange circle here is a building for the future. So support innovation, build capacity around the world, increase the capacity to observe human impacts of the ocean, uh, and also to champion a better and more efficient governance of the observing system. Can you go to the next slide, please? So in the in the case of ocean science, we really have the vision for the ocean decade is the, the science we need for the ocean we want. And goose and ocean observing system are prey placed front and center of that. But we have to move faster to implement the decade. And the ocean is complex and dynamic and many social economical system that are influences by land-based activity but also from the atmosphere and, and the cryosphere. Um, so the most pressing need is to collect and find the transformative solutions to the existing future challenges face the ocean and thus humankind. And in Goose, we took the uh, approach to highlight three different areas of, of activities that we think are very key for the ocean decade, and we are not launching the whole of Goose infrastructure into the decade, but three particular areas where we look for uh, a better ocean predicting forecasting system for the coastal ocean, coastal predict, and a, a system to better integrate observations and another system to co-design. And Willy will take this from here and talk a little bit more about this Let's go ahead, William. Thank you, Tauste. The next slide, please. As you all know, the theme for this laboratory is a predicted ocean. What we want to accomplish is a predicted ocean where society understands and can respond to changing ocean conditions. This will be done by connecting the development of reliable predictions to the needed observations and the delivery of infrastructure and solutions co-designed with stakeholders according to well-defined needs. We are highlighting programs that are going to fulfill this goal and have been already endorsed by the UN Ocean Decade. Next slide, please. First, programs under goose integration, as we see in the schematic below. The program Coast Predict has a transformative aspect of redefining the science of observing and predicting the global coastal ocean, co-designing the needed infrastructure, and offering open and free access to coastal information. Coast Predict has already built an international network of partners, and you will hear more details in a dedicated presentation that follows. 
The program Ocean Observing Co-Design will create a system co-designed with observing, modeling, and key user stakeholders. And you will also hear more details about this program at a, a presentation that follows. And Observing Together, which will transform ocean data access and availability by connecting ocean observers and the communities they serve. Next slide, please. Then we have 4C, Ocean Prediction Capacity of the Future. This is an endorsed program that is led by Ocean Predict, an international network across national centers to exchange and improve science in support of prediction systems. Ocean Predict has already a long history of accomplishments. It contains several task teams that have contributed to building 4C. Together with Pierre Demay of Legos in France, I co-chair the Coastal Ocean and Shelf Sisters team, which also contributed to Coast Predict. So you see these linkages and you see, as it was mentioned at the core event yesterday, that we're not starting from scratch. 4C aims to strengthen international community approach that advances ocean prediction science in collaboration with observation groups and others. It increases integration, capacity, efficacy, use, and impacts of the ocean prediction systems and co-creates an effective and sustainable collaborative operational oceanography ecosystem environment with democratized access to output and responsive to user needs. This will be done jointly with other decay programs across the value chain. You see a simplified schematic of the value chain to the right, bottom right. So we have in the middle the product data delivery connected to the left with data management and monitoring systems observation networks and prediction assessment systems and to the right for the delivery of services and solutions to end users and clients. Next slide, please. These programs together will enhance collaboration and consideration of user needs that will lead to increased knowledge and understanding of the ocean and result in sustainable solutions. They will develop a user-focused co-design process to create a more integrated, responsive ocean observing system. They co-design an overall framework, including standards and best practices for the full ocean observation and prediction value chain. And they will enhance prediction system science and its impacts on society. Next slide, please. There are several benefits for society, just a few examples here. The overarching benefit is to empower society to adapt to change. This will be done with reliable predictions of different potential futures that will be supported through the development of new multi-platform observing and modeling technologies and through more skillful predictions and warnings. Another big benefit is the sustainable management of ocean resources and overall, a more effective decision-making to improve delivery of knowledge, products, and services to a range of stakeholders. Next slide, please. Thank you very much. We are ready for continuing the program. Thank you both so much for that introductory presentation. Um, we, I'm just uh, switching over to the first keynote presentation. So we have a few keynote presentations following now that we introduce the bigger program and give a quick overview of the different decade programs uh, that are going to follow and try to fill in those gaps uh, that were presented by both Philly and Tulsa. So thank, thank you so much for, for that overview presentation. Um, we're going to hear from the from the three programs that were introduced, Ocean Observing Co-Design by Emma Haslop, uh, Coast Predict by Nadia Pinardi. Um, we have one on 4C, and then as an example, that um, and as a project that's uh, running uh, Synapse. So I'm gonna show you guys the recording of those uh, presentations, and then we're gonna go into the Q&A session. So just give me one moment.
All right, I'm just checking that everyone can see my screen. Looks good, Anne. Perfect. Looks perfect. Thank you. Right. right. Well, um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, perhaps depending on which part of the world you're tuning in from. My name is Emma Heslop, and I work for IOC UNESCO, supporting the Global Ocean Observing System, GOOS. And here with my colleague, Sabrina Speech, we're going to be talking about the Ocean Observing Co-Design Program, one of the three GOOS Ocean Decade programs that have recently been endorsed by the, the Ocean Decade Office. Um, Sabrina, along with David Legler, are the co-chairs of this program, and Albert Fisher and Anne-Christine Zinken have also been very much involved in, in the core work. So what, what, what does this program do in terms of supporting the decade? What, what are we looking to transform? So Ocean Observing Co-Design is about transforming our Ocean Observing System assessment and design process. And we're going to take you through the ideas behind that. So I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the converted here, but we need uh, a lot of new information from the ocean and on the ocean to meet some of our major challenges that society faces across climate change adaptation and mitigation. We need better prediction in the coastal ocean <clears throat> and for weather, uh, for uh, things like extremes, but also in the coastal ocean for food security and for human safety, and finally, the, the well-being of marine life. And for all of this, we need to better integrate our observations and models to produce more useful knowledge and to establish clear priorities for the investment in the ocean observing for the future. We can't observe everywhere all the time, so we need the information to be able to make the best choices. So ocean observing co-design will support strongly the ocean decade in this area by transforming our ocean observing system assessment and design process. We aim to develop a more user-focused co-design process to create a fit-for-purpose integrated and responsive system including the large range of current ocean observing efforts and those that are in plan, as well as actively involving new technologies. And of, as I said, getting together with the modeling forecast and services communities around the process of co-design and together build this process, the infrastructure, the tools to better inform uh, investment and benefit society. So we have five objectives. Uh, I won't read through the whole of these objectives as they're quite long. So um, the, the aims, the top aims are really to offer the, the national government funders and, and other funders the information needed to target investment globally, regionally, and even locally, to provide these investors with the opportunity to create a hub or a center of excellence around, around this new capability, to make ocean observing and information appreciably more accessible and impactful through this transformative co-design process working with the modeling community and key user stakeholders. We aim to develop system diagnostics tools and reporting capability so that we can better assess fitness for purpose across evolving requirements and also establish the international capacity and modular infrastructure to co-design and regularly evaluate the observing system. Now core to this concept, which is what we'll have a look at in a minute, are the use area exemplars. These are use areas of, of users with a, with a defined use that they want to put these observations and um, model outputs to. So it could be, for example, in extreme event forecasting around carbon budgets for governments or, or even the reinsurance industry. So this is to kind of dive into that exemplar area a little further. So you may be familiar with the FOO, which is on the right hand side of this, um, this slide. And in the, in the red circle is, is the kind of the, the feedback mechanism that was um, seen to exist between uh, the users and the, the, the services and, and the, the requirements. This is really where we're focusing. We really want to strengthen and transform this, this whole area. And that will, indeed start with looking at the, the user needs and requirements around use area exemplars and using this to kind of 
drive co-design, looking at whether there's products and services in place, uh, working with the observations community around what exists and what's in plan, and then working to produce answers around where that we would gain the most value with the models and assessment tools, really aiming through these processes to create an integrated and more impactful observing system with models and, and products. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague Sabrina now, who's going to kind of uh, expand a little bit on the exemplar areas. Sabrina, all yours. Yeah, so the strategy between the exemplars lying in taking concrete user cases to assemble community forces and pragmatically build an integrative effort towards our goal. So here are some examples we are discussing with partners and uh, other uh, or decade programs. So for example, uh, the carbon uh, cycling is um, uh, really uh, uh, have direct economic relevance to blue bonds and carbon trading, providing vital information to governments needed to conduct the uh, COP processes. Well, we can also focus in some extreme events, for example, uh, continental heatwaves that have really a strong uh, impact on society, and it is uh, really of interest of national uh, weather services. We can uh, uh, work on coastal storm surge inundations that have a, a imp impact again, a strong impact uh, on our society, and we'll be working uh, towards uh, a better uh, coastal managing, management, urban planning, and uh, risk reductions. Uh, we have also uh, marine heat waves that uh, impact um, food av availability and, uh, and security. So it is really important for uh, aquacultures and fisheries. We work also together with GECOS um, uh, and GOOS, and we need to report to UNFCCC, so in on variable and assessment about uh, uh, climate cycle, in which, for example, the climate ocean heat content uh, uh, takes uh, really a key role. So uh, with these exemplars, uh, we are building the partnership uh, concretely between the three programs in order to uh, for them uh, to exist uh, for real. So what we will be delivering to society uh, uh, during this ocean decade uh, through this partnership, we will uh, really uh, make uh, goods more mature to benefit society. We will develop uh, tools that will allow our stakeholders, uh, sponsors and users to ask key questions about uh, the cost and also the benefit that uh, uh, that uh, is a, uh, that comes from an ocean observing and receive a quantitative answer. We will be able, for example, to better track the current state and future variability of the ocean. We will improve the prediction skills and we're uh, better society about uh, extreme events or the changing climate impact. We will uh, better manage uh, ocean resources. We empower society to uh, concretely adapt to uh, the, uh, the rapidly changing climate. And we will assess the impact of action toward a sustainable ocean. So how we will be contributing to a predicted ocean. So the observing system will be integrated and will be, uh, this integration will be guided by user or users, in any case, uh, uh, building through these exemplars. Process and tools uh, will uh, better align to the, predict uh, to the prediction systems uh, across the different services uh, and uh, the observation uh, will be fit for purpose they rely on. Enhanced ocean knowledge powered by connected observations, model, and products. The ocean decade, ocean observing, uh, is a, an opportunity, but also a challenge because uh, we need to install a dialogue uh, through different uh, uh, partners that are uh, essentially programs and the community of uh, ocean observing and modeling. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, working through these uh, user cases will enable this dialogue to go become concrete and to build a, a stronger partnership. So the coordination will, uh, uh, will be based really on, on this um, integrative effort toward these practical cases. 
So uh, this, uh, this uh, ocean observing co-design has uh, already built uh, a stronger uh, partnership through an advisory group and co-design partners that goes across uh, international organizations that, um, that uh, works uh, in science or services to society. And we are uh, really looking uh, to uh, build uh, with all the observing and modeling communities and services as, as a larger and stronger partnership that we hope will come through concrete uh, project to the ocean decade. So we thank you very much for your listening to our, um, to our uh, ocean observing design descriptions and you will be finding more uh, information on the Goose Ocean uh, web. Page. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to both Sabrina and Emma. Um, there's a question in the chat, but I'm going to hold off until we made it all the way through all the keynote presentations, and then we'll we'll make sure to address them uh, in the Q&A session. Uh, so next up, we're hearing the presentation on high quality good uh, on coast predict and good morning everybody this is a short presentation to explain the main goals and expected outputs of the endorsed decade program coast predict observing and predicting the global coastal ocean the program has been constructed by a community of international research organizations and individual scientists satellite agencies governmental and un agencies the main idea is to start a process of transformative science for the global coastal ocean, revolutionizing observing and forecasting in the coastal areas, co-designing the international infrastructure needed to offer free access to coastal information. The basic concept of the global coastal ocean was proposed uh, in the five volumes of the historical series, The Sea. Coast Predict will redefine the coastal ocean. And here is a starting definition. The coastal zone is that area extending inshore from the estuary mouth to river catchments affected by salt waters, including the urban settlements on the one side and extending on the other side to the offshore from the surf zone to the continental shelf and slope, and slope waters, where waters of continental origins meet open ocean currents. In the past 20 years, operational oceanography has developed information up to the kilometer scale in the global ocean and regional seas. Now we need to reach where people live, where climate change impacts are affecting people's activities, arriving at the few tens of meter resolution. We have prototypes and we need to standardize them, test them in many coastal areas of the planet. What a wonderful opportunity to do it in the decade. The high level objectives of Coast Predict are then a predicted global coastal ocean, the upgrade of to a fit for purpose oceanographic information infrastructure, co design and implementation of an integrated coastal ocean observing and forecasting system adhering to best practices and standards designed as a global framework and implemented locally. Uh, it is now time for my colleague Joaquin to continue. So I'll leave the floor to you. Thank you. Coast Predict is a co-designed transformative response to science and society needs, focusing on the many common worldwide features of the coastal ocean. The implementation plan accordingly has been framed around six focus areas corresponding to major outcomes and challenges of the decade and covering around 10 different coastal ocean areas of the planet. Each of the six focus areas will define the detailed scientific and strategic plan for maximum two core projects per area. Coast Predict will actually revolutionize global coastal ocean observation and forecasting, offering open access and free access to coastal information. Accordingly, the Coast Predict new integrated 
ocean observing approach will focus on integrated multidisciplinary and multi-platform ocean observation that will guarantee free quality control and open data are received, pre-processed and made available for scientists and society. By this improving and extending the predictive capabilities in the coastal zone and the response to end users needs, by this again, reinforcing the value chain of ocean observation and forecasting. And now I ask Billy, please, to continue. Thanks very much. Cost Predict is engaging in transformative science in support of predictions that bring the ocean effects all the way to the coast and even the urban coastal areas where people live. This is a schematic of what we call the urban ocean that connects the marine influences with the terrestrial influences and the predictions of natural phenomena, as for instance, coastal hazards, with the impacts of socioeconomics, even building code needs, engaging architecture and engineering, as well as impacts on coastal ocean and human health. This is an example of prediction of coastal storm surge inundation that integrates advanced research and storm surge prediction with geographic information science, coastal vulnerability, and visual risk communication. The Coast Predict main decade outcomes are integrated knowledge of the global coastal ocean from events to climate, under our goal to advance knowledge, the design and implementation of an integrated river, estuary, coastal ocean, open ocean, ocean observing and modeling multidisciplinary system towards integrating, observing, and predicting, improved coastal marine forecasting and extending range predictive capabilities toward accurate predictions from hours to decades ahead, the development of methods for trusted data information exchange and the interoperability through the entire value chain and their adaptation as best practices toward open and free access to coastal information, innovative and sustainable applications for coastal solutions and services that directly benefit coastal populations, including well-being and human health. This is our solutions component. Increased equitable education capacity for observing and forecasting the global coastal ocean. This is our capacity building component and strong engagement of early career ocean professionals and promotion of education, training under principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is our education component to make sure that no one is left behind. And now I invite my colleague Emma to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. So, well, the, the, the challenges put on the table by the ocean decade uh, a large, not just within the observing and forecasting community, but also in terms of the coordination um, amongst the observing and the forecasting community. But this will be vital for the greatest level of impact and, and also the greatest level of efficiency. So GUS, in responding to the decade, put forward three key and, and large programmes. Um, and these are um, connected through the theme of integration, um, ocean observing co-design, Coast Predict, which we're talking about uh, in this presentation, and observing together. And each of them focus on a, a different aspect um, of meeting the decade challenges. Coast Predict into the coast, ocean observing co-design, as it implies, really creating a, a new co-design system and observing together, really enabling local and smaller communities to all uh, profit from observations. And as you can see from this diagram, it uh, was envisaged from um, early on that there would need to be close cooperation between these programs and, and many of the other programs. And there will be a particularly tight cooperation between Coast Predict, Ocean Observing, Co-Design and 4C. Um, and you know how, how is this going to happen? I, I, th I think I see two two major ways. One is through dialogue and alignment, and then second through having co-projects that we will use to to sort of formulate these these strong connections between the programs. And you could envisage very early on a connection around the the, the co-design of of aspects of the the, the Coast Predict program. Um, also connecting into the to the 4C solution. So I think as you know, we, we talk a little bit further, we'll see these pro projects really coming to life that help underpin um, the the well the co-design cooperation between these uh, three entities. So I'm going to hand over to Nadia for the final word. 
Thank you, Emma, Vili, and Joachim, uh, for you know growing together this community. Um, but not only we were supported, but we were uh, continuously fed by ideas from eighty uh, different institutions around the world, twenty advisory bodies. 20 ACOPs that helped in the past year to build uh, the strategic plan and only the initial strategic plan. You have an email here to contact us and uh, please get in touch and get involved. Thank you. Thank you so much to our four speakers for the close predict presentation. Uh, we're going to move to our next speaker, um, and I hope everything will uh, come through properly. Let me know if there's any issues. Um, moving on. Hello to everyone, and a very warm welcome to this short presentation on 4C. Ocean prediction is an essential component in the provision of dissemination of ocean information. And Ocean Predict is a science program for the coordination and improvement of ocean forecasting systems. Ocean Predict provides a platform for communication and knowledge exchange. Ocean Predict is run by scientists and experts in operational oceanography from around the world. And the goal of Ocean Predict is to accelerate, strengthen, and increase the impact of ocean prediction. 4C, the ocean prediction capacity of the future, is a UN Decade of Ocean Science program that contributes to the decade goal of a predictable ocean where society has the capacity to understand current and future ocean conditions. The vision of 4C is for strong international coordination and community building of an ocean prediction capacity for the future. There are two overarching goals. The first is to improve the science, capacity, efficacy, use, and impact of ocean prediction systems. And the second is to co-build a seamless ocean information value chain right from observations all the way to end users for economic and societal benefit. These transformative goals aim to make ocean prediction science more impactful and relevant. In order to extend the vision and transform the capacity of ocean prediction, we have certain high level objectives. These are listed here. The first is to coordinate ocean prediction worldwide in a suitable manner towards maximum societal benefits. The second is to maximize the benefits of ocean observations for ocean predictions and societal impact. The third is to support development and maturation of the full length operational oceanography value chain from observations to the end users by using best practices and coordinating the integration of existing and new partners, such as international science initiatives and inter intergovernmental organizations. The fourth is to advance the science behind ocean prediction and its connection to the other components of the Earth system, which includes atmosphere, land, cryosphere, continental hydrology, etc. Finally, make ocean prediction science more impactful and relevant by collaborating with the socio-economic experts and stakeholders to quantify the impact and utility of ocean prediction for science and society, especially in coastal areas, uh, particularly in collaboration with uh, a Coast Predict, which is another UN decade program. Now, uh, how is this different from the business as usual scenario of ocean predict? Ocean Predict has a coordination mechanism that runs across national ocean prediction centers for information exchange required for improving ocean prediction. 
However, the impact and relevance of advances in ocean prediction towards societal benefits are not well quantified, nor evaluated or communicated. On the other hand, the vision of Foresee includes strong international community building of the ocean prediction of the future that not only advances prediction science, but also increases capacity, efficacy, use and impacts of the ocean prediction systems. It is envisaged that this would lead to an effective and sustainable operational oceanography ecosystem environment which is responsive to user needs. What is envisioned? It's envisioned that Foresee would transform the ocean prediction so as to penetrate the layers that have not been accessed until now. Towards this, Foresee will co-create a framework for operational oceanography, enabling scientists to engage and collaborate with all components of the value chain as well as the UN decade programs associated with these components. This would enable the creation of an effective and sustainable operational oceanography ecosystem environment which is responsive to user needs. More importantly, Foresee will enhance communication of the impact and relevance of ocean prediction. Outcome from Foresee is expected to improve the interaction between the ocean environment and society, particularly in the areas of human health and health of the environment. Having a good understand of understanding of the oceans and their interaction with the human health will be important in any future human health disasters. The improved integration of observations and models which would happen during Foresee would allow science, policy, and civil organizations to understand the ocean's role in health impacts, especially under a changing climate. Accordingly, the emphasis of Foresee will be on making the ocean predictions and reanalysis easily accessible to community at large via a central repository. In order to approach the ocean, the solution. Foresee would focus on two major themes. The first theme is catalyzing transformation, transformative ocean prediction science solutions for sustainable development, connecting people and ocean prediction. And the second theme is increasing impact and relevance, improving science and science capacity for the ocean we want. Realization of these themes would take place through projects that take up the challenging task of scientific development demanded by impactful and relevant ocean predictions. These efforts are designed to contribute, to contribute towards the bigger UN goal of transforming from the ocean we have to the ocean we want. The theme one would generate mechanisms for ocean prediction science and marine environmental prediction services for blue economy. Theme two would advance the science needed to evaluate its impact on prediction systems, enabling focus on and enhancement of relevant capabilities and efforts. Connection and exchange with other bodies is absolutely essential to achieve these large goals democratizing ocean information to enable more impactful engagement is not an easy task to be achieved alone but together with other forums of similar interest. Foresee will collaborate with and leverage data, data access platform programs to provide inclusive accessibility ease to ocean observations, ocean prediction inputs and ocean system information. This would be done in an equitable manner, enabling everyone to access and benefit from ocean information. In addition, Foresee would engage with the diverse stakeholders in the core design processes via existing or emerging partnerships with programs such as UNEP, GeoBlue Planet, WMO, IOC, and GOOS 
and also with other DGATE programs such as uh, Cost Predict and Marine Life 2030. Larger participation from the scientific community will be solicited, solicited via projects that are relevant to uh, the goals. Additionally, 4C connects with several UN decade projects. These are uh, the observing system co-designed by GOOS for designing and implementation of observing networks interface with open ocean systems and cost predict for global ocean analysis and forecast to the cost ocean. These two programs, OPSCODE and cost predict, also collaborate with SYNOX, which is also closely linked to uh, uh, 4C. Ditto for advanced digital framework on which all marine data, modeling, and simulation outputs will be shared so that it can be accessed, manipulated, analyzed, and visualized for marine information. GEOS, Global Ecosystem for Ocean Solutions for New Scientific Knowledge, and uh, together with 4C technology prototypes to advance solutions and involve stakeholder communities. Ocean Science Fund for All for synergy with 4C to co-finance and co-implement projects that build the capacity of under-resourced regions to monitor, understand, and predict their cost to ocean. Ocean Co-ops for sustained long-term education and research collaborations between scientists beyond all boundaries. During the implementation of 4C, one major activity and contribution would be capacity development by developing special programs for the involvement of early career ocean professionals. The email contact point for 4C is 4C2020 at gmail.com and the web page is oceanpredict.org. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Vinashtran, who is uh, working at the Center for Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences, the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And now we will have a, a presentation from Ayosike Fuji, who is a senior researcher at the Meteorological Research Institute in Japan, Meteorological Agency. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Ayosike Fuji working at Meteorological Research Institute, Japan Meteorological Agency. I'm co-chairing Ocean Project Observing System Evaluation Task Team. We are now proposing synergistic observing network for impactful and relevant ocean predictions, or SYNNOBS, as an UNDK project. In this presentation, I will introduce what we are and what we will try in SYNNOBS. You know, Synops is suggested as a common comprehensive project among the three UNDK programs, 4C, Cost Predict, and Ocean Observing Co-Design. You know, 4C is proposed by Ocean Predict in order to enhance the ocean prediction value chain. Cost Predict is also proposed to promote use of coastal prediction for societal benefits. These programs need to collaborate with observational community to construct the observing system which are effective for predictions. Meanwhile, ocean observing co-design is proposed by GOOS to make the ocean observing network optimal for various purposes. So, Synops is proposed as a UNDK project under the collaboration of ocean predict task teams in order to generate transformative collaboration among the three UNDK programs. So the objective of SYNOBS is to seek the way to extract maximum benefits from the combination among various observation platforms, typically between satellite and east observation data, or between coastal and open ocean platforms in ocean and coastal predictions. On the strategy, SYNOBS aims to identify the optimal combination of different ocean observation platforms through observing system design or evaluation and to develop a simulation method with which we can draw synergistic effects from the combination. And our targets include open ocean, such as global ocean, tropical ocean, mid-latitude, and polar areas, and coastal and biogeochemical observing systems. An expected activity of SYNOPS is evaluating the existing ocean observing network. For example, 
This figure shows the impact of tau light on array and alg flows on the ENSO forecast, which were provided at the 2040 Tropical Pacific Observing City Workshop held after the crisis of the tau array. We will continue this kind of activities. That is, we aim to evaluate the ocean observing network using ocean prediction system to support their sustainment and further development. And it should be noted that evaluation results will be severely system dependent as illustrated by this figure. This figure shows that the impact of the Triton is very different among different systems. So it is necessary to perform evaluation with multiple systems to get the robust and reliable conclusion. Therefore, community collaboration is very important. We also aim to support new observation. Synops will support designing new observing system through observation system simulation experiment, OSSE, or some other methods. For example, this figure shows clear reduction of errors when data of two source altimeter satellites are assimilated. We will support new satellite missions while constructing new instant observing systems through this kind of activities. We will also promote development of data assimilation scheme to assimilate new observations, as well as development to get more benefits from existing observations. Then we will summarize and provide information we get through operational activities or evaluation efforts using ocean prediction systems. This is a table on usage of observations in the ocean prediction systems we are currently presented on the web page. Thus, Synops will summarize information on the observation data, such as usage, QC, and impacts, which we get through ocean predictions. Those information will be provided to observation committee to support the management of ocean observing systems. Meanwhile, so far we tend to focus on a specific observing system, but to lead transformative change on ocean predictions in this decade, we need to maximize benefit from the full ocean observing network. Therefore, we decided that Synops will focus on synergies among different observing systems. So we will focus on the synergy from the following combinations of observing systems. First, satellite arithmetic, satellite ocean current observation, and algo flows, mainly for ocean predictions. Second, satellite SST observation, near surface east observations, and sea surface atmospheric parameters, mainly for couple data simulation. Third, satellite ocean color observation and east observations for biogeochemical predictions. Fourth, observation of sea ice concentrations and sea ice thickness for polar predictions. And fifth, coastal ocean radars and sensors, gliders, drones, satellite remote sensing, and algo flows for coastal predictions. Then, Synops will bring benefit to the society. You know, Synops provide a straightforward reason for sustaining the ocean observing network. Then, it also makes guidelines toward a synergistic ocean observing network for a predicted ocean. And thus, suggests effective investment for the ocean observing system. It will also support improved ocean and coastal prediction capacity which will make benefits to marine disaster prevention, marine economy promotion, marine ecosystem management, climate prediction, and so on. So, Synops will surely contribute to a predicted ocean. Synops will evaluate the ocean observing network to sustain it as an indispensable infrastructure for a predicted ocean. Synops will design ocean observing system to improve ocean and coastal prediction capacities. Synops will promote development for effective use of observation data in ocean coastal prediction. Through these activities, Synops will contribute for sea and coast predict and a predict ocean. Of course, Synops will contribute to ocean observing co-design. Synops will provide information on importance or necessity and effective designs of the ocean observing network for ocean and coastal predictions. 
It will also make input to the authorized report on future evolution of the ocean observing network from the perspective of ocean and coastal prediction. The synops aimed to construct a positive feedback cycle between the observing network and ocean prediction systems. Then, how can you get involved in synops? You know, synops will have on site and online meetings. A symposium is planned in November 2022, Tsukuba, Japan. We also have online meetings every two to three months. So it would be nice if many people attend those meetings and share the results and join the collaborative works for future evolution of the ocean observing network. You know, collaboration among observational and model and data simulation community is indispensable for successful evaluation, design, and development. In addition, results using different prediction systems are necessary to get robust and reliable conclusions. So we will really welcome participation of young career scientists and various kinds of people. So see the web page or mail to the contact addresses to join our activities. These are information on the contact and the web page of Synops. Don't hesitate to contact us. That's it. Thank you for your watching this presentation and I'm looking forward to seeing you in Synops activities. Thank you very much, uh, Yosuke, for your presentation. So I think we have uh, completed uh, the presentation of uh, these uh, different programs. And we go now to uh, uh, the panel that uh, were uh, uh, responsible of, uh, of these uh, programs will uh, answer your questions. So the panel is uh, uh, constituted by Emma Eslop, who is a project specialist at the EUC UNESCO, the Global Ocean Observing System Program. Then Nadia Pinardi, who is a professor for oceanography at Alma Mater Studiorum, University of Bologna, Italy. Uh, I think that we do not have a Fraser Davidson that, uh, who must have some problems in connecting. So for 4C, we will have Professor Vina Stran, uh, who is working for, uh, for the atmospheric uh, a center in ocean science in India, in Bangalore. And then we will have uh, uh, Elizabeth Remy, uh, who is a senior scientist at the Mercator Ocean, and Abe Wu, who is our early career professional in the group and is a senior lecturer at the Center of Mar for Marine and Coastal Studies, University Saints, Malaysia. So, uh, maybe a question to start is a general question, then we will uh, uh, answer the questions that are in, in different boxes. So the question is, uh, how should uh, the program work together? So Emma, you, you put a slide in, in two different uh, programs where this, uh, uh, these are clouds with many clouds within. So I don't know, uh, can we share how we can... Um, we can collaborate and also try to, to incept uh, projects and uh, activities around this program and the collaboration. Great. I'll make a start and perhaps other people want to join in. There were some great ideas also coming up in the, in the presentations. I think you could clearly see strong alignment of the objectives already. And I guess that's like a, a, a top level thing is, you know, communication between the programs and creating some some alignment and certainly alignment, I think, of creating a bit more of the infrastructure will need to do some of these things that will be really important. But I really see perhaps projects as the way of driving the um, the knowledge about what infrastructure we need. I think we need to work on some clear projects together, such as the uh, the idea within um, ocean observing co-design to have exemplar areas. And I would see parts of these other uh, programs being, you know, being integrated into those projects. And we really kind of, you know, cement the, the, the connections um, that are needed. For example, you know, one 
uh, exemplar area could be an important area within the Coast Predict program, and you know Synops would also be involved in that in 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 the evaluation phase. Um, so that that would be 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 my ideas. I don't know if uh, other panelists would uh, like to jump in and uh, comment. Nadia, you need to take out your to open your microphone. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, yes, adding to what Emma has said, the decade has also, uh, is also planning uh, specifically some uh, decade uh, collaborative centers that will uh, have the specific purpose of um, having program uh, intersections and uh, cross uh, crossings. Um, this is uh, being built nowadays. And uh, this would be, you know, formally. However, since uh, we were already inside GOOS, uh, and uh, GOOS will be the final infrastructure that uh, IOC will, and being also IOC and WMO, GOOS itself, uh, has already the correct uh, um, interagency uh, kind of framework so that. Uh, there will be a feedback uh, of the Ocean Decade uh, results from the three programs, at least, uh, that are inserted, that will be direct. And so there are different levels of coordination between the programs. Certainly, um, the Decade Collaborative Centers will have a primary role. And the second, uh, as I said, being uh, predicting uh, in, uh, in our challenge, we have already started the collaboration with the three uh, programs of goods. And so, um, you know, this is starting. Uh, we have actually to also define well the implementation plan for each of our programs. And so the next month, I guess, there will be a lot of discussion on implementation plans. Okay, thank you. I don't know if uh, others uh, would like to comment. Yes, uh, Professor Finastra. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you uh, for organizing this uh, discussion session. <clears throat> so, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, in my talk, uh, uh, the four C uh, has uh, a fairly uh, elaborate value chain that extends right from the observations and uh, all the way to the uh, to the uh, users and uh, uh, one of the major goals of Forsi is to make highly useful user oriented programs and uh, uh, this uh, would require uh, quite a bit of a strong engagement and interaction with uh, uh, many components and which also includes several uh, UN decade programs. Uh, so the Ocean Predict uh, already has a system to engage with the national centers and so on. And uh, right now we are in the process of building all these connections with the other uh, groups, such as we already have a very close link with uh, Coast Predict and the Synops is uh, a part of uh, uh, 4C. So uh, we also uh, uh, plan to, uh, you know, uh, have close connection with many other programs such as DITO, which would give a kind of a digital ocean platform and uh, uh, so on. So uh, in the near future, uh, we look forward to building uh, these connections very closely and uh, check out plans on how this can be uh, taken effect. Uh, so we would also plan to make, uh, you know, uh, involve, uh, get involved with uh, the leaders of those uh, projects and uh, prepare plans so that this collaboration and uh, uh, can be taken ahead so that the items listed can be deployed at the earliest possible date. Yeah, okay, thank you. thank you very much. Uh, I don't know, Abe, if you want to uh, come in uh, uh, with a, a comment or otherwise, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, I think, I think um, the collaboration work is one of the most important part of making the success of uh, any any programs in UN decade. So um, the framework that has been presented is large, in large scale, a scale that um, I think has not been seen before. Uh, Goose itself is 
is really already a large network. But with when when we are uniting more partners and and projects together, now that we can have a really uh, integrated um, as well as united kind of data sharing system that we could now really grind for the next ten years. You know, um, try to predict, try to look at what is going to happen, and you know share off the information more effectively, especially looking, um, especially me coming from a, a less developed country or a developing country, you know, trying to help um, countries with uh, lesser funding to build out their infrastructure and, and to join in this international um, collaborative work together to move, um, to move the agenda of the ocean together. Yeah, that's from me. Okay, thank you very much, Abe. Actually, your point is a little bit uh, what is coming up uh, in the questions. So, for example, uh, all the panelists have a little bit uh, uh, talk about uh, high level and intermediate uh, level stakeholders, uh, but uh, actually uh, uh, small countries or uh, here we have a question about the Gulf of uh, Guinea, countries in the Gulf of Guinea and uh, specifically Cameroon or um, other uh, organizations um, uh, that are uh, providing observations, but they are not distributing this observation largely. So the, the question is how uh, we can try to include and reach uh, these uh, different uh, user or stakeholders that are not really integrated completely in these intermediate level or high level uh, uh, organizations. I think I think this is the great opportunity, isn't it? Not when we we are have this program, and now I think the framework has been set well. Uh, with um, I, I mean, as speaking as a younger, I mean everybody's young here. I'm just I'm younger, <laughs> uh, younger ocean professions, and and I see that uh, now is the time where you have this UN decade of ocean science, where now all, almost all the countries in the world are involved, and this is the time now. Then we uh, we sort of then our hand, you know, bring up a um, um, nation that is uh, lesser involved before, and now they they are they are at the forefront of impacts of the ocean in the near future. So uh, it, it's it's a great opportunity that we have this collaborative network, and, and it's now it's, it, it is now time to, to reach out to them, and then see how then we can uh, integrate with each other on, on on our works, focusing on the young people especially especially. Thank okay, you. no, this is a great opportunity, but still is a challenge uh, to reach everyone and to include everyone. So Emma, maybe you uh, you are willing to provide a, a, an answer or a way? I have a couple, yeah, I have a couple of different, I have a couple of additional thoughts, right? Um, and I think that, you know, seeing a, a strong capacity development element in 4C would be one area for building up capacity in the, um, you know, in the uh, operational oceanography side of things. And that would seem to be, you know, a strong component that would be uh, of assistance. Um, the other side of things in, in the ocean observing co-design program, I think we need to work a little bit in, in, a, in, in the early years to develop a system and supportive infrastructure, but it's always, in the aim of the program is over the course of the decade after let's say a first initial phase to have uh, a process, have best practices, have uh, some infrastructure and tools in place so that this assessment can take place at local levels, at small levels. So all sorts of organizations can get involved and, and, and do their own assessments because on, on what their local needs are and, and take that learning. So I think, and the capacity development will, will come along with that. So embedded in the programs, there's capacity development as I see it. And I know that's also important in, in Coast Predict. Right now, because um, you know we're building new capability in, in essence, I think right now the third goose program, which is, is perhaps not so much about the predicted ocean, but certainly is around enabling uh, local and community scale projects to profit from all the knowledge and the experience in the global ocean observing system, have it applied to their local level to be of assistance, and that is observing together. And I think for some of these questions that observing together together could be a really good locus um, to put forward ideas for a project 
um, around the community and and let the sort of the global systems provide assistance to, to getting that off the off the ground in one way or another. So so I would direct people to to right here and now for that sort of project to observing together. Yes, yeah, so observing together is another uh, program uh, uh, of the tree that uh, Goose is uh, supporting uh, directly for the UN Ocean Decade. So you you can uh, reach out uh, to the web page of Goose and uh, find uh, all the information over there. So I don't know if uh, Nadia and Professor Vina Shadran uh, or Elizabeth, you have uh, any thought on this? Go ahead. Uh, maybe Elizabeth wants to talk before me. I've already spoken a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now it's just uh, back to the primary question about how the programs can work together. So I think Synops it's a project, so it's not a, one of those programs, but it's really an example of uh, where they are clearly linked to belt around the activity of uh, assessing the impact of observation in the ocean prediction systems. And as um, it's important to do that in the context of the coastal observing system, but also the open ocean. And as the activity is mainly done within 4 c we really need now to communicate on those activity and to link the modeling community, the ocean prediction community and the observing community because today it's really quite weak and done just in a dialogue between persons and uh, it should be clearly announced, organized at a higher level. So synops would be the occasion of, uh, through the identification of exemplar that we would work together, we will be able to announce this and uh, communicate more efficiently and improve at the end the observing systems and uh, for synops, it's really for the purpose of the operational oceanography. Uh, but this uh, operational uh, oceanography is, of course, uh, answering a, a question that society is interested in too. So I think uh, really the question of defining exemplars that are, uh, are able to involve either regionally or, or locally some end users and stakeholders is, could be a good idea because, uh, for example, we have listed among uh, the possible uh, exemplars that uh, will be defined in the coming months and uh, in, in collaboration with uh, probably new project and uh, activities are marine heatways. And, and therefore, uh, maybe um, CNOPS can, uh, can work uh, really to very pragmatic uh, uh, questions and not uh, just uh, a general framework uh, of, uh, of uh, ocean uh, prediction for uh, sure. operational oceanography. Sure, so here it's the occasion to really focus on a few applications or so really social uh, important uh, aspects. And not only looking as usually at the results of our experiments, but really at looking at the impact uh, for more relevant user or social um, events. So, Professor Vinasha, I know that uh, the ocean observations that have been uh, deployed uh, recently in the Indian Ocean are providing really high services uh, for uh, prediction of weather and uh, of course of the ocean, but also the weather uh, taking into account the couple system too. And uh, so this is uh, a kind of uh, regional impact. Uh, and uh, how do you see probably developing further locally or uh, thinking about a regional project if that is going across these different uh, programs and Synops. How do you see that? Yeah, uh, so uh, you're very, very uh, correct. Uh, the observing system in the uh, Indian Ocean, such as the Rama uh, moorings, which is deployed by jointly by India and uh, NOAA PML, has made a major impact on the forecasting of monsoons. Monsoon is a lifeline of uh, uh, India and many countries because all the water that uh, this part of the world needs comes during the monsoon, that's just within the four months of time. And forecasting the monsoon correctly is very important for uh, agriculture planning, economic planning, and it can even uh, 
uh, you know, affect industries and up to the governments. So uh, this is a couple of the ocean atmospheric problems. So uh, ocean information and ocean data has made a huge, huge change here. Now, uh, coming to the Indian Ocean, uh, so there are uh, very few countries which invest uh, uh, in a major way, either in terms of observations or uh, a modeling of the Indian Ocean. India being one of them, and of course, Australia has made major stride in the ocean prediction systems and, and so on. So this is uh, one uh, place where the major topics that we have discussed, that is observing together, uh, connecting, and uh, all inclusive uh, topics can uh, make uh, a major impact and demonstrate the, uh, the major goals that the UN decade is perceiving in a very, uh, very visible and impactful way. Uh, now, how this uh, to be uh, taken into effect is, has to be uh, developed and uh, so that uh, the all inclusive programs can be developed and the uh, ocean forecast and the products that would be developed would be made for the uh, utilization of all. Now, as uh, Remy mentioned, uh, the communication, of course, is going to be a key step in, in developing this and in addition, capacity development. So Forsi has already made some initiative in terms of uh, developing the early career ocean professionals program. So uh, we expect that these new programs would be able to make a contribution which is useful to the society in a sustainable manner in the next uh, two to three years or so to begin with. Okay, I will come back to this last sentence and I leave Nadia saying what she needs to say. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Nadia. <laughs> yes, uh, um, because I mean, this is really prediction, right? So we shouldn't forget that we need to share the predictions and the analysis and the reanalysis. We are not only uh, sharing observations, so that is crucial, but we have to step into the decade. Uh, uh, to try to arrive at the end of the decade. I can assure you that 10 years are not so long to do that. To make available to all communities very high level products such as they come out from assimilation systems in forecasting systems. These are actually the best estimate of the state of the ocean. And the best of our knowledge is, is considered which is where there is observation, there is an observation. Where there is no observation, there is a model to fill the gap. So at the end of the decade, I hope that our infrastructure will be able to deal with data transmission protocols for information coming from models, forecast at different space and time scales to allow everybody really to get uh, in maybe starting or enough information to start their own uh, road toward the predictions. Without that, we will be not matching the challenges. So this is to say that we need to consider information instead of observations, integrated um, in products, that consider where there are observations. Let's say it, observation will never be enough. So integrated information for what we want, for what we want to understand. So we need to have integrated information that is called in the modern way, analysis, reanalysis, and forecast at different space and time scales to be transmitted, available for everybody, free and open. And we have already experiences in the world that do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nadia. Indeed, even the uh, uh, meteorological offices that, uh, especially in Europe, were uh, not providing the, the data openly. Now they are starting to really go on uh, blue clouds and provide the data. But so we will need also to, to build capacity for people to use also this data, right? and uh, not only to run uh, uh, ocean models or to uh, make observations, but also how to share and use this, uh, this different information. So 
just a question about that. How there is a, a program uh, in the UN Ocean Decade that is uh, DITO, so the digital twin of the ocean. So would be this the, the way of sharing the data? And Emma want to say something. <laughs> So you, I, for, for me, you kind of really hit a great point there, Sabrina. I, I think that's exactly, it's one of the great things about the decade is that these exciting programs are, will be able to develop new capability in, in these areas. And ditto is like thinking about how to, how to harness new technology, how to look at users in a different way, um, fueled by you know, fueled by new capabilities that come with the technology connecting to, to what's happening, you know, um, connecting to the systems that exist and are, and are coming into place. So exactly that, um, I think ditto is, or the concepts around that are a part of the future of ocean information use. And that, you know, these, these programs, ditto is a partner with Ocean Observing Co-Design. I would see Ocean Observing Co-Design over the course of time, receiving a lot of information about what users need in one way or another from Ditto, that there would be a very close connection as that kind of interface to ocean, ocean data, mixed ocean data, as, as Nadia is saying, takes off to ocean information. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Elizabeth, uh, Professor Vinash-Chardran, uh, Abe, do you want to add anything? Yeah, uh, yeah, just one more point which I wish to add to uh, what we are talking about, about the dissemination of, uh, of either data or ocean uh, uh, reanalysis. So uh, it's also necessary to consider uh, what the needs of the user are. And uh, when an information is provided, it is preferable to be in a format and the manner that is applicable to the task or the problem that the user is looking at. For example, uh, fisheries would, would require some a specific kind of information. And uh, uh, shipping, for example, would uh, require uh, probably a different kind of information. And uh, uh, industries such as oil companies may require yet another type of uh, information. So this is uh, likely to be one of the uh, major challenges that uh, when we run uh, down to the tail end of the value chain, where, where we are looking at the uh, users and uh, the applicability of ocean uh, information. Now, um, uh, it's also required that this has to be uh, tailored to the, uh, to the user needs and also to be made available at a time when this is required. Often, often the information is required at very short notice, and that is where the communication is uh, important. It has to be accessible uh, for, for all. So the development in technology and communication, the way it has revolutionized, has made major uh, strides in fields. For example, uh, a stock market, and if, which was not uh, accessible to a major community, particularly in the developing world is now at the, at the fingertips. So can we imagine a situation like that for ocean information uh, to happen in, within, the, within the period of, of, of a decade? So this is uh, uh, one thing we uh, should plan to achieve as a, as a goal in the coming uh, years. Okay, so what you are saying essentially is that uh, from a phone, whenever you are in the world, you, you could uh, try to, to go into these informations and use them for your purpose as an end user, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, this may, may work as a two-way system because uh, uh, the, the, the forums which produce the reanalysis or the ocean prediction, they uh, produce, they develop the products in a such a way that they, they perceive as the requirement of the community. Now, uh, are we sure that these are the products that, that we exactly want? Is there another kind of product which the user is, uh, user is looking forward to? And do we have that information reaching back to us, back to the uh, observationalists or reanalysis developers so that we can develop that, that system? 
So once we reach that state, the two-way communication is, is, is established, I ex expect that there would be an explosion of information flow and also data products, which would uh, disseminate in a, a, like a tree all the way up to the multiple layers of uh, uh, users right from the ocean prediction uh, systems. So I also expect that several intermediate players would also come, will, will be introduced in the way in order to develop these products and also disseminate this information to all the layers that we are we, we want to penetrate to. So right uh, up to uh, all the goals of the sustainable society that the UNDK is aiming at. So you want the information to spread like, like in social media, <laughs> news spread, right? Well, social media right now is the most popular one. We, would, we wouldn't know what would be uh, 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 there in the future. But uh, no, well, of course, but uh, something similar is already happening for uh, local uh, weather forecast or risk reductions, because, for example, uh, in, in the cities, uh, they, are, uh, they are starting to have uh, cars that have sensors or phone that have sensors that measure temperature and right. that uh, provide back to the uh, weather, local weather service, they integrate into the model to, for example, forecast uh, heat uh, islands in, in cities. Right. So it is, a, it is a something that uh, probably will, uh, will be very interesting to, uh, to be integrated for the ocean too, uh, not with cars, but uh, with ships. And actually there is a question, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, I, I think uh, I, I lost who, who asked the questions, but yes, is Antoine Cousot. So uh, without going into technical legal details, what would be the impact for Goose if uh, and all these programs, uh, if thousands of pressure boats would be equipped with temperature and salinity uh, sensors and ready to share the data. So this is a kind of telephone or car measuring temperature but also salinity in the ocean which is a little bit wider than than any land so what do you think who who wants to step up to answer nadia go ahead so welcome i say fortunately we will get them we know already from um, the meteorological uh, system that private companies do collect their own data on their airplanes and do have uh, citizen science much more developed and the results are evident if you can see there is a clear ambition to you to uh, have this uh, complementary data sets to really help into uh, improving the forecast and there are already results written in the literature so welcome now, how to start uh, in oceanography um, this road uh, in order to get, uh, you know, the most valuable uh, data out of uh, this effort, which is definitely to start, especially in the coastal area. I would say in the coastal area, we are dependent uh, on this uh, big effort to start soon uh, during the decade. Um, is it? I, I think it's, it's one of the science issues. We need to make the best uh, uh, measurements and uh, effective measurements uh, for uh, monitoring coastal inundation, for example. We actually never verified our model for how inundation is really, what, where inundation is reaching in the towns, in the marshes, everywhere. Okay, so hopefully, yes. But clearly this is, and not but, and this is one of the decade uh, outcomes, I believe, that in Coast Predict, we will try to deal with, uh, in, especially for the coastal area. So citizen science data, very important. Thank you very much. So yes, thank you. Actually, we, we are pushing as oceanographers working in science really the observation of the ocean in uh, in the sailing boats, uh, the, etc. So increasing the number of uh, ocean observation is really 
important not only for ocean prediction themselves and coastal prediction, but also for weather forecast. So it is a really, uh, a, could be a really important input to society. I don't know if uh, Emma or Elizabeth, you want also to add something? Yes, Daniel, uh, Elizabeth. Well, go, uh, Elizabeth first, and then Emma, you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just a thought. It's really an example where it illustrates the complexity of the change from the really the in situ observations until the uh, the use in ocean prediction center. So it, of course, it's it, it's really great to have more some observations, and it's clear that in coastal zone that's already identified as a area where we need more. But to be integrated, they really need to. It's really a challenge to handle the such a large diversity of data to qualify them and to then have uh, into what we call integrators, where the forecasting um, centers are relying because they took a data database and not individual networks, so they are linked to those database. And this thing should be done, and also the data should be somehow qualified, and there should be some agreed best practices around them. So it's where the difficulties I think are, but it's really important. It's, it's a nice challenge, I think. But this is maybe where the ocean decade can provide us yes. some, uh, some improvement. We will be doing, hopefully, uh, the integration of this data in a mm. different way from uh, in 10 years from now. Uh, Emma, you wanted to add some, uh, some points? Actually, I think it was Venkat who wanted to add some points. That was. Uh... Yeah. Can I add? Venkat here. Go ahead. <laughs> Very interesting discussion. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm joining now. Yeah, there are uh, more opportunities coming up. Uh, last uh, 10 years, we have visibly seen uh, how the observation has expanded. Now we are looking at the new revenues and uh, we look for uh, newer data sets or any uh, one data set added, it is improving the prediction capability. That is what is a major challenge now. We can see here World Meteorology Organization and uh, IOC coming together and looking for uh, new ways of data collection. Like uh, Dr. Nadia said, yes, there are more opportunities. Even any other resources like uh, fisheries vessels, they may have an opportunity to collect data and share with us. So this is what is uh, days to come where the citizen scientists, all the NGOs, the feedback mechanism, which Dr. Vinay Chandran said is very important. How far the, the prediction, what has been given or the forecast is given is uh, correct, that the feedback mechanism uh, should work into that. I think the Ocean Degade will answer all this aspect to improve that and look at all these different resources so that the, the data collection capability and the technology part is very important. The automated technology would play a major role in the days to come and uh, many other tools and the systems will be evolved. And how do we integrate that? Here comes a best practice method we need to look at because uh, when you look at the decision tree, the best practice offers you to change your decision tree when you come with a newer idea. So here comes individual uh, role and you go out and start collecting data, please document it and provide that as a best practice so that we can improvise the data what we provide. So with this, I'm sure that the ocean decade will answer to that in the case of uh, predictive ocean, particularly on 4C, and all this aspect will culminate into better result and serving to the society. Because society is in demand now, they are not like earlier days, they look at this uh, social media, they look at different so there are private forecasters, to look at it and say, where do we get the best uh, result out of that? And they, they do verify, so the knowledge is expanded and we need to cope up with that speed and the answer to these questions. I'm sure that uh, the, the efforts taken by UNDK to this predicted ocean will uh, result in a much, much better result to satisfy the need of the society. In particular, on multi-hazard, there is not much of time available for us. UNESCO IOC has done a wonderful job in the case of uh, tsunami early warning system. That need to be expanded. Look at the newer challenges what we have, like uh, many other coastal activities to be supported. And there are also opportunity for the blue economy where the industry is looking for these inputs. I'm sure that this will answer to all this aspect. And in addition, island communities, they are uh, the for front facing all these challenges that require a more amount of data collection in the coastal area and that need to be expanded. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Venkastan. So actually, uh, you have said uh, uh, many key points. So the key points are that maybe we can work in exemplars that are extreme events in order to better be prepared to uh, adapt, help adapt society to these, uh, to these new challenges. And uh, also maybe that uh, the, the jobs that uh, will be in oceanography in this uh, developing these 10 years are not just uh, the scientists that do ocean modeling or prediction or observation, but also the te technological side that is, of course, developing new sensor, cheap sensors, but also the technology that goes and help to link observations uh, and uh, the, com the communities and societies and the, actually the informations through uh, this uh, new way of communicating and, uh, and also uh, preparing in, uh, the, the, the society with uh, uh, really best practices on how to use uh, all this information. Uh, do any uh, panelists want to chime in and uh, comment on this? Yes, Nadia. Yeah, just say that oh, Emma. Oh, Emma, Emma, Emma. Right. Then. Uh, the, there is, uh, you know, the, the ocean ops um, that uh, is is under goose has. I guess you'd call them some some experience in developing pilots with yachts. Um, there, there's been, you know, cooperation with the Volvo ocean race and things like that, and these have been important, um, collecting not just temperature and salinity, but also uh, biogeochemical variables and also sampling water for marine debris. So this is quite a sort of a, com a more complex package of, of information. And they also have um, a put in a, a sort of a uh, what looks like it could be a project into um, the Ocean Decade Odyssey. And that, uh, so, I, so I think there's some sort of some congregations of ideas and things coming together. But I, I, I really, you know, I agree with the other panelists that if we can leverage the decade to get the effort needed, the, the actual, the additional resource to help sort of tackle some of these more complex issues, because it's not just putting a sensor on a boat, um, that, that, you know, that will be a, a, a really good step forward. Um, okay, that's it. Wanted to say something, you were stopping. No, I won't, no, no, not stop. Um, I just wanted to uh, actually go back to one important message, I think, uh, that we should keep in mind. Uh, we have much information to transfer and uh, to make available free and open, but we have also priorities. In a sense, uh, we have to have priorities and we have to think of uh, an adequate uh, value chain. We are much evolved in value chain uh, in oceanography now. We have started to draw them in the past 10 years. I'm sorry that not in this no presentation, yeah, there was a 4C presenting one value chain, but one concept is the following. There is uh, some basic priority in the data exchange and I would say first is observations, and second is analysis and forecast. So these are the basic. Then on the basis of this, you might think, like in Europe, we think like this, that you can have also customized products like for oil spill, uh, we were talking about, all, that are done, um, you know, uh, after, and they are done much more locally than at the global level. At the global level, we have to set up the exchange of data, at least for observations, analysis, and forecast, because that is the base on which you do build the more detailed user-oriented uh, product. Without saying that what uh, was said before, we need to then elaborate a way to communicate with these end users that do the customized products. And it's true what it was said before. So we need to, I think Goose has already experienced uh, in the past and developed uh, and so on. 
to make you know priorities and really achieve. We need to achieve outcomes for free and open data access at the end of the decade. That has to be a must. And uh, you know priorities such as ops and analysis and forecasts for everybody, free and open. I think uh, could be shared by a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, the next one will be Abe, then uh, Professor Vinash Adran, and then Emma. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I was, I was. Uh, Nadia has said it, so it is so well. I was about to say that you know we could have continued collecting data, and uh, and and we we, will, we would then be collecting and and amassing um, the, the 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 amount of metadata. At the end of the day, when there is no kind of analysis and and a sort of uh, make sense of data at the end of the day data will just you know be freely open for everybody and you know the end user might not have any sense of what what is it going to make up for and then the user would not be able to sort of do some prediction to not cannot do any sort of uh, management using using such metadata that that's we, we started to look at um, citizen science and how um, people is living at the coastal area. If we, if we don't involve them in, in observing and collecting data, and we, 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 we are making a big mistake here if we do not involve you know, people that is been living there and know they are, they are the people who is going to get impacted um, and sorely. So those are the really big um, um, stakeholder that we should be looking at carefully in the next 10 years and you know, giving enough training and making sense of, you know, what, what, what how does this data going to be affecting uh, their livelihood in the, in the near future? So um, by, you know, the, 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 one of the key words here is, is the science must be, you know, must be uh, uh, said enough, I, I think, in the next decade. Thank you. Thank you. Sabine. Thank you very, very much. Professor Vinash Adran. Uh, yeah, um, a quick point, uh, uh, Sabrina, you uh, mentioned about the low cost sensors uh, uh, becoming available. I think this would be a major step uh, because ocean observation is not uh, an, an easy business and it's, uh, it involves uh, major financial investment. And this would be uh, very important for uh, you know, uh, parties and regions uh, which are not really involved and often the data that is required from crucial regions do not enter the system. And owing to that, predictions and reanalysis is suffer. So uh, whether we include taxis which fly in the ocean like boats or, or vessels, uh, if they have to take up this task of collecting data while, when there is an opportunity, would, re, would heavily rely on availability of uh, sensors, instruments, and platforms, uh, if, even if it is not at a low cost, at an uh, affordable cost. At the end, as, uh, uh, at the end, as uh, Pinardi, Nadia Pinardi mentioned, that all the data and information have to be freely available and uh, uh, to, to all at no cost. So uh, uh, the promoting and uh, uh, making a mechanism by which I do not yet know whether we do have the UN decade or the associated programs. Do we have a connection and communication with the, the companies and industries which produce sensors and instruments to lay out a plan to make this uh, uh, sensors and the instrumentation uh, affordable and in a way so that the uh, you know the propagation of data can uh, spread very fast. So probably this is a kind of recommendation that we should push also at the UN levels, and maybe the UN level can go back to to the industries. Yeah. I would be message. very happy to support that recommendation. Okay, Emma, you want uh, also to add a comment? I was going to pick up on what Nadia said about priorities also and sort of segue to perhaps answering a question that was posted um, by Pedro Ribeiro about uh, a approaching and engaging with the, the end users, because that's, uh, I guess, you know, part of the way um, 
of thinking, part of the way of thinking about these priorities is about societal priorities, right? So what are our priority areas that are more important uh, right now to, to get sorted first, so to speak, or, or where's, where's the biggest gap in, in information that society needs? And so some setting of some, there are some sort of levels of, of priority perhaps where um, ocean observing co-design might initially work on um, and this is will be based not just on priorities right but certainly around making sure that um, significantly problematic questions such as I don't know extreme weather events which are causing loss of life damage to property and uh, where there's a real need to um, gain additional ocean information to to help with the the accuracy of these forecasts as one example uh, would be sort of a, an area perhaps of, of high priority but that those will be um, looked at in 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 developing these programs these projects around use areas and will have input from you know government bodies and, and funding to some extent will will also influence those those priority and use areas but he also asked about the approach to reaching out and engaging with end users and I I believe this is a really important question and I think it's good to to get some views um, I come from a from a business background and so sort of market segmentation is was sort of my bread and butter in a in a previous career. So when I think of an end user area, um, you know, you might be saying, well, what's the maturity of that market? You know, if we if we get the data, are they ready to use it? So and are the are, are the models sufficiently mature enough that we can come out with a, a good enough answer about where the observations would be? So in looking at these priority areas, it might be around importance to society, but also around what, what answers can we get out now and are the services there to, to connect to these end users. Um, where there are good services available, a more mature market, and this is to specifically answer the question in the end, we would go out to those, we would go out to those services and engage with the service providers rather than a whole host of end users because it's a it's an easier problem. If we are, are dealing with a less mature value chain, and we've mentioned the value chain several times, indeed, you know, ocean observing co-design would need to go out, I think, and, and speak to a sufficiently, you know, homogeneous group of, of users, and that's a, that's a work in itself to kind of define what that is, to understand what their needs are and, you know, work with the modelling and even perhaps work with uh, the ability to provide the data or the services in the way these end users are needed. And I think that um, ocean observing co-design should perhaps consider projects of different levels of, of maturity to, to work on these, these problems. So th there's some thoughts there, right? It's not a specific answer. I think it, it depends on the problem you're tackling, but if we tackle a few problems, we should come out with some more comprehensive knowledge and guidance about how to go about it, something that we can replicate. I share this view with you. So different level of uh, project okay. maturity. <laughs> this will enrich the table and the integration. So Dr. Ven Venkatesan. The, the microphone, the microphone, please. Sorry, I'll add here an important point, which uh, Emma said and followed that is you need to have a mechanism by which uh, the value chain uh, is properly brought in. And here comes the role of uh, regional bodies. The Goose has got a regional associations, which is connecting to the global, to the national level and to the need, because there, there are different requirements in the regional level and the national level that need to be properly percolated. There are also success models available wherein uh, we need to provide the data, for example, when a cyclone or hurricane comes, it has to come along with the storm surge uh, data. That is what is a user requirement. So these changes in the days to come involving different agencies and different type of data sets that need to be required. For example, in the flood forecast, we need to have a geophysical or geotechnical data related aspect. So all these agencies need to look to provide the end product. That is what is value chain is all uh, looking into that. So we, we have developed expertise. We are having a, a newer model tools, uh, but the days to come, I'm sure that this will culminate in the, the, the goose uh, pro programs and they will take care of these aspects. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I uh, I think that there is a, it, it, in this uh, 
last couple of years, uh, I think there is an, a better in, engagement with uh, the regional group and uh, this uh, two-way uh, discussion with uh, more local uh, uh, communities and uh, pro problematics and the, and the global view, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to add uh, anything on this. Otherwise, I would uh, add a point on the quality control data. So uh, the, this has been a challenge that has been met, uh, for example, with Argo floats. So we were using a small amount of data and validating, calibrating them in a very old fashion. Now with Argo that has millions of profiles, we had to work in a different way also because this Argo data goes to the GTS, so to the uh, forecast uh, uh, services uh, uh, straightforward. So how, how we uh, control and validate this data. So we have learned with uh, Argo, uh, and I think there is a need, a better integration of also of uh, how we validate and calibrate the data in order for the near real time data that will increase in the future if we have all this uh, uh, citizen science, et cetera, and, and need to be tackled too, right? I don't know, Nadia, if you want to say something. Well, no, you said it all already, and definitely is this is important. I would like to add uh, one concept that came out from the discussion with uh, uh, Dr. Snowden in the chat. Uh, uh, who uh, clearly um, ha has the um, approach uh, of uh, looking at this a little bit, uh, uh, the problem public and private uh, issue, which is under our discussion here. Emma started to define one, but I would say that I would really like to see and I think uh, other people too, that the decade uh, produces new science that is available to everybody, both private and public, everybody, you know, the whole uh, community. And uh, that however, we take uh, uh, a, a big step on constructing a public good service too, that is, uh, for this uh, data sharing. Now, the private clearly collect their own data. They collect well, probably their own data. But, you know, first of all, we have, I think the moral and ethical um, level to start with the public one, the, the public system and uh, the public good system. So our, whatever we build in the decade, has to make it to be available. For private is different. It is different. It has to be different. But we have, uh, uh, we need to build the quality control in the public good service for the data to be transmitted. We need to uh, produce uh, the data in the correct way with the advanced technology in the pub, making available in a public good kind of concept of service. This is, I hope, uh, one contribution that the decade, but I, I see all the symptoms of the right direction. Uh, the decade will uh, finally uh, give to the oceanographic community uh, uh, in a positive, in a very advanced way. So I'm very happy that uh, we started the decade <laughs> Thank you very much. So we are uh, reaching uh, the, the time of uh, finalizing our uh, panel discussions. I don't know if there is uh, one point you want to rise quickly. Anyone? Uh, yes, Emma? Okay, so uh, I mean, on, on behalf of certainly the the uh, ocean observing co-design, but I think perhaps for all the programs, it's to have a think, I, you know, we're connected to, to many people and to have a think about if there are projects that are moving in this sort of direction that, that could be aligned or, or could support some of the work that we want to do. I, I think that's a, how, how we can create sort of globally, a sort of a mesh of, of, of actions that will help support 
you know, the, the, the major lines of work moving forward. So we do, we do look for many collaborators. So the message is out. Please uh, come to us uh, directly by email if you do not find uh, any other ways uh, through the uh, Regional Association of Goose, but uh, really also through the Association of Early Career Professionals. There are also uh, new jobs possible uh, <laughs> so for the early career professional. And also, of course, the link with the private sector is very important. So I would like to handle now the the voice to Toste, maybe. Uh, Toste, are you there? Yes, Sabrina, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and thank you all the panelists and, and everybody here and all the audience for all the interesting discussion. I think this was a great session. And uh, so we heard a lot from the decadal programs today that are now addressing different aspects of co-design in ocean observing and forecasting. I think that's really great. In the ocean decade really offers a unique opportunity to make that transformative changes in ocean observing and forecasting and the co-design. And I think that the, it's good to remember that the ambition of the decade is to be transformative. Um, so it also offers the support of the implementation of a new way to do interactive and co-design, cool including scientists, implementers, the users, and, and, and private industry. And we address some of these aspects already here. <clears throat> but I also think it's important, and we are doing that already, keeping the eye on the legacy of the decade. Because we want these transformative projects to actually fit into these more permanent structures that we have. And I'm confident that by the end of the decade, we will have a much better system for ocean observing and forecasting based on these activities. So uh, from my side, thank you very much for a really good discussion. Thank you very much uh, to all. It was really, uh, you made uh, all great points and uh, you have a lot of energy too. So this means that uh, we are good in engaging uh, with energy and a lot of hope to make a step change during this decade. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well organized discussion. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. And I would like uh, I would like to thank you, Anne Zinkan, because she was really yeah. the diamond behind <laughs> everything. Yes, thank yes. you, Anne. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you.